Thoughts on Cultural Safety, with the Intention to Inform, by Josie Oje. Tansen, hello. My name is Josie Oje. I'm a First Nations person from Treaty 8, Alberta, specifically a Nehiao Squill. I work for Athabasca University as Associate Professor, located on Treaty 6 territory. Today's presentation um, are my thoughts on cultural safety with the intention to inform. So i um, going to present uh, some terminology as well as discuss uh, two projects that I've been recently involved in. The National Aboriginal Health Organization states that cultural safety within an Indigenous context means that the educator, practitioner, or professional, whether Indigenous or not, can communicate competently with a patient, and that patient's social, political, linguistic, economic, and spiritual realm. In addition, Naho states that cultural safety moves beyond the concept of cultural sensitivity to analyzing power imbalances, institutional discrimination, colonization, and colonial relationships as they apply to healthcare. The Indigenous Physicians Association of Canada, IPAC, in partnership with the Association of Faculties of Medicine of Canada, defines cultural safety as a state whereby a provider embraces the skill of self-reflection as a means to advancing a therapeutic encounter with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. Self-reflection, in this case, is underpinned by an understanding of power differentials. It also emphasizes a central tenet of cultural safety is that it is the patient who defines what safe service means to them. The Aboriginal Nurses Association of Canada states cultural safety considers the social, political, and historical contexts of health care. The difficult concepts of racism, discrimination, and prejudice, and unequal power relations. Cultural safety also involves challenging inequalities in healthcare and improving healthcare access to diverse populations. Finally, cultural safety acknowledges that we are all bearers of culture and health service providers must reflect on his or her own culture impacts the healthcare he or she provides. So the recent research um, that I conducted well, there's two of them. The Invasion of Sexual Boundaries, How Has It Affected Indigenous Women's Views of Government, the Past, Their Way of Life, Their Thinking, the Way They Get Along with People, and Their Relationship to the Earth and Environment. And the second that I'd like to include here is the Determining, determining the Dynamic of Online Access and Understanding the Effects of the COVID-19 Pandemic on Indigenous AU Learners and Their Families. So let me first discuss the invasion of sexual boundaries. The invasion of sexual boundaries research is not a new topic for First Nations, Métis and Inuit communities in Canada. Disclosing sexual abuse in residential schools emerged in the 1990s when a chief brought it to national attention leading to a formal apology from the Canadian federal government in 2008 and the launch of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I was a First Nations band counselor from 2014 to 2018. And I also lost my mother in 1988, tragically and su suddenly. And I felt the vicarious trauma of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls. And after completing my four year term, my life path changed to academia. And I was curious to know as Inuwak, which is a term that means like indigenous people, can we have healthy sovereignty if we have not determined our sexual experiences? The research began in the fall of 2019 and was completed before Athabasca University closed its facility due to the coronavirus in the spring of 2020. People respect the virus and wanted to avoid transmission of it. So the communities where the research had been conducted were locked down. Translating parts of the research from Nehiawewin, which is the Cree language, to English halted temporarily. I was able to share a research report with the Nehio Squiwak, 
the four dimensional female beings, um, which is uh, what that means in Cree, uh, who were involved in the research. So I shared the report with them. The pandemic gave me time to think and write, and it took me longer as a Nihio Squill um, researcher to come to the place of being able to write about such topics after completing the research. So um, I looked for patterns within Indigenous research methodology, which was what I was using and which what some people refer to as wisdom seeking now, to develop an Indigenous trauma-informed model to talk about healing with women who have experienced rape, molestation, child sexual abuse, and incest. Addressing self-determination and sovereignty from the traumatic experience of Nihil Squiwak was at the heart of this research. Um, I had 11 Nihil Squiwak involved in the 2019-2020 research project as co-creators. And the co-creators are Métis and First Nations women grounded in their culture and healing. Ceremonies and prayer supported this process. The co-creators addressed the question of inquiry and guided the design process and content. A group facilitator, a cultural helper, a transcriber and translator assisted in non-participant roles maintaining confidentiality. Based on individual interviews and group meetings, themes and quotes were reviewed. This was exploratory research and I applied ethical and cultural teachings in the process. Based on the results and goodness, we created an Indigenous trauma-informed model that reminds us healthy women are self-determining their lives and body sovereignty leads to nation sovereignty. It has taken me longer to find my voice and to collaborate with people from diverse backgrounds, experiences and worldviews. Now I'm here 10 years after completing my doctorate, attending ceremony, parenting, grandparenting, working, and the four-year leadership term to conduct the research and author papers and address what healers and counselors have known about the invasion of sexual boundaries. The idea of research as a ritual practice is one that involves knowing who you are as, an, as a researcher and as an Indigenous person. The years spent in education, employment, and leadership, learning from the elders and family members, Cleansing, purge, purging preconceived notions of the research have been the stage for ritual practice. This research ritual ensures the words of the co-creators are seen. Through the discursive practice of reviewing the writing, they validate the results. Transformation and renewal are the last steps. And this is knowing that through this research, the co-creators, researchers, authors, and communities will benefit from it. The other research uh, project that I wanted to talk about um, occurred during the pandemic and, and um, that, well, during the pandemic in April 2020, Athabasca University announced a special call for proposals to better understand and learn from the changes due to COVID-19 and the adjustments and adaptations that have taken place amongst um, Indigenous learners. My research team submitted a proposal and obtained ethics approval we hired a graduate research assistant and the institution released information to the research center to inform indigenous students of the research study. We started collecting survey data, conducted a focus group and individual interviews from September to December, 2020. I spoke to a broad spectrum of indigenous students and listened to what they had to say. And these conversations come to mind when I think about indigeneity. I was talking to a friend about cultural safety and thinking about my research project for this uh, presentation. I thought about the people that I spoke to based on my recent research experiences and my worldview. Cultural safety is being able to speak up to injustice. It is about using the culturally inherent foundation of indigenous cultural practitioners as a safe, sacred space to help each other. It is about equity for Indigenous people and honoring them through cultural protocol for their services. It is about allowing Indigenous people to express their worldview and ways of knowing that worldview if they choose. Cultural safety is about embracing the concepts of parallel pathways so that Indigenous people can govern their knowledge, 
research, programs and services, and all else. It is about respecting the broad diversity of Indigeneity, including First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and non-status people who have been labeled by the Indian Act and Canadian legislation. It is about accepting one another into each other's hearts. It is knowing that divisive racist legislation has separated people from their communities and heritage. It is recognizing that some Indigenous people have not felt culturally safe to express their Indigeneity due to racism, but are now declaring proudly their ancestry. Cultural safety allows people who have lived their culture to be recognized as knowledge keepers to deliver culturally safe programs. It is recognizing that the Indigenous worldview has been oppressed and that a conversation about treaty relationships is long overdue. We all need to recognize the individual and collective rights of Indigenous peoples that have existed since time immemorial because we are all treaty people in a relationship as settlers, settlers of color, and Indigenous people. Thank you.